Week 7 has arrived, BetDAC has released the lines, and I'd like to talk about a few of them right now. Of course, we preview all these games here on BetDAC NFL, so we hope you check back with us over the course of the week. But let's talk about a few of these games now quickly, starting with the Thursday night game, the Seattle Seahawks going on the road to face the Arizona Cardinals. BetDAC has the Seahawks installed as a 6.5 point favorite, 40 is the total here. Now when I first saw this line, I thought the number was a little low. The Seahawks, in my opinion anyway, a much better team than the Arizona Cardinals, and I do expect them to get this win. But the more I look at this game, the more I have doubts as to whether the Seahawks are going to be able to cover. Listen, it's no secret they're a different team on the road than they are at home. The Seahawks, the best home team in the NFL. They've won 11 straight home games, 9-2 and two against the spread in those games. But on the road, you look at their three performances this season. A 12-7 win over the Carolina Panthers. That 23-20 overtime win over the Houston Texans, a game that the Texans dominated for three quarters. Seattle came back in the fourth quarter. It was the biggest comeback in Seahawks franchise history. They ended up pulling out the win in overtime. And then their last road game, a 34-28 loss to the Indianapolis Colts. Now you look at those last two performances against the Colts and the Texans, and they look a little less impressive now than they did even a few days ago. Obviously, the Texans have totally unraveled since that game. We look at this team now, and we're not even sure if they're a good team. And the Colts, I think everybody still thinks they're a good team, but they were certainly not impressive in their Monday night loss to the San Diego Chargers when their offense failed to produce a touchdown. So, listen, there's no doubt that Seattle, away from home, just isn't as good for whatever reason, especially on offense. They aren't as good as they are at home. And the Arizona Cardinals, the opposite is true. The Cardinals are playing very well at home this season. They've won both of their games. And you look at their two wins at home against Detroit and Carolina. Hey, coming off of last Sunday when Carolina blew out the Minnesota Vikings on the road, Detroit picked up a 14-point win on the road in Cleveland. Now those wins look better than they did a few days ago. So, you know, maybe we're slightly overrating the Seahawks and slightly underrating the Cardinals. And you look at the matchup here. Seattle, they have a good offense, no doubt about it, but... They're a conservative offense. They don't open it up too much. Seahawks currently 24th in the NFL in pass yards per game. They do like to establish that power running game with Marshawn Lynch. But the Cardinals excel defending the run. Arizona 5th in the NFL right now in rushing defense. They're allowing, they're allowing less than 4 yards per carry. I don't know if you saw their game last week against San Francisco. I know a lot of people were watching the New England-New Orleans game uh, during that time. But I did see some of that Cardinals-Niners game and... In the first half, Frank Gore had, could find no running room against that Arizona defense. Now, they loosened up a little bit in the second half, but there's a good chance, at least in my opinion, that the Cardinals are able to really slow Seattle's running game in this game, which will slow Seattle's offense. And, and we've seen that happen this year. As we said, Seahawks only produced 12 points in that loss to the Carolina Panthers, and their, their offense was, uh, it, excuse me, they produced 12 points in their win over the Carolina Panthers. And their offense was non-existent for three quarters against the Houston Texans before really waking up in the fourth quarter. Now, I don't expect Arizona to have any offensive success in this game. Seattle, second in the NFL in total defense, third in points allowed, and the Cardinals are bad on offense. They rank in the bottom five of the NFL in both total offense and points scored. That's why, even though I initially had a Seahawks minus 6.5 lean here, I think my favorite bet in this game is going to be the under 40 is the total, and that's a very low total. But, mm, I, I, again, it's, it's hard for me to envision the Arizona Cardinals having much success on offense. And I do think they're going to have success on defense. I think this is a good matchup. The Cardinals' defense is better than most people realize. So I'm going to look at under 40 on this Thursday night game. Obviously, we still have a couple of days to go, and we'll be delivering a more com comprehensive preview of that game. But as of right now, under 40 looks like a good bet to me there. And I do think the Seahawks are going to pick up the win. Next game I'd like to talk about, the Cincinnati Bengals going on the road to face the Detroit Lions. Detroit, a one-point favorite on BetDAC. Interesting. This game has, some, has seen some serious line movement out in Las Vegas. This game opened at Pickham. The line now, Detroit minus three all over Vegas. Again, Detroit, a one-point favorite on BetDAC. But betters pouncing on the Lions here. I don't know. I'd be very careful about doing that. The Lions notoriously inconsistent. They haven't done anything this season to change my mind as far as that goes. And I was on them last week on the road against Cleveland, and they paid me off with a nice win. But you never know what to expect from Detroit. Ten wins two seasons ago, four wins last year. And this season, at times, they look like both teams. Two weeks ago against Green Bay, their offense only produced nine points. 
Only the second time in the last 51 games they have failed to reach double digits. And they look like that same team in the first half against Cleveland last week. They, they fell behind 17-7 to after their offense had a nice uh, game-opening touchdown drive. They really fell asleep for, for the next quarter and a half. Of course, they woke up in the second half, ran off 24 consecutive points. And so now I think a lot of people creeping back on that Detroit bandwagon. And Cincinnati, a lot of people were high on the Bengals coming into the year, but you look at their recent performances, two out of their last three games, I think, have left betters unimpressed. Of course, three games ago, the Bengals losing to the Cleveland Browns. And then this past week, beating the Buffalo Bills, but doing so in overtime. Cincinnati was a seven-point favorite in that game. They did not cover the Bills starting Thad Lewis at quarterback, who had been on the practice squad a week prior. Bengals were a popular public bet this last week. I think a lot of people expected them to comfortably beat Buffalo. And I think that result surprised some people and sort of gave them cold feet as far as betting on Cincinnati goes. Now, they did beat the New England Patriots sandwiched in between those two unimpressive performances. But even in that New England game, the offense only produced 13 points. And this Cincinnati offense has struggled to get going for the past couple of seasons. Once again this year, they rank in the bottom half of the NFL in yards per game and points per game. And with some of the weapons they have, guys like A.J. Green, Jermaine Gresham, the running backs they have, Ben Jarvis Green, Ellis, Giovanni Bernard, it seems like they should be better than they are on offense. Andy Dalton gets some blame. Jay Gruden maybe should get some blame. Don't think he's started to get blame yet, but... For whatever reason, Cincinnati offense for the last couple of seasons has not been able to really get going and produce some of the explosive plays it seems like they're capable of. Now, Detroit, they can produce those explosive plays. The Lions, once again, top five in passing offense. But man, Cincinnati plays well on defense, and I have an early lean towards the Bengals in this game. This seems like the type of game to me that Detroit has lost. It seems like a good letdown spot for Detroit, but again, we'll be previewing this game in detail, and I, I'm not sure I'm going to get involved way early in the week, but at, when I saw the line move in this game, when I saw a three-point line move out in Vegas in the Detroit direction, boy, I thought, man, people might be jumping on the Lions a little bit early. Not sure the Cincinnati Bengals are going to lose this game up in Detroit. We shall see on Sunday. Another game, another game involving AFC North teams, of course, the Bengals leading the AFC North right now. The Baltimore Ravens going on the road to face the Pittsburgh Steelers. This has been, I think, the best rivalry in the NFL over the last five or six years. I think it's been passed now by the San Francisco-Seattle rivalry, but certainly these Baltimore-Pittsburgh games, certainly a lot of animosity between these two teams. Both teams have traditionally played great defense. Baltimore slipped on defense a little bit over the, over the past couple of years. They currently rank 17th in the NFL in total defense. Pittsburgh, once again, top 10 in the league in total defense and pass defense. We see a, no, a total here like 40.5. Pittsburgh, a one-point favorite on BetDAC. Listen, if this Baltimore-Pittsburgh game is anything like most of the Baltimore-Pittsburgh games over the past six or seven years, then we will be wanting to look under this total. This game always seems to turn into a, a slugfest, and it seems like the line is usually three or three and a half, one side or the other, and the smart bet is usually whichever team is getting the three or three and a half, because it always turns out to be a field goal type game. Of course, not always. There have been a couple of exceptions, but you look, these teams play twice a year, and you look at their results over the past six or seven years, so many of these games are close, low-scoring games. These teams know each other so well, and this season, these teams are both struggling on offense. Pittsburgh has been really bad on offense. They finally picked up their first win of the season last week, but still did not reach 20 points. Beat the New York Jets 19-6. to Baltimore does not rank in the top 20 in total offense or points scored. A little bit of a surprise. Now, I know Joe Flacco lost some weapons this offseason, both to defections like Anquan Bolton going over to the San Francisco 49ers and to some hard luck injuries like Dennis Pitta and Jacoby Jones. But... The Ravens' offense starting to get healthier now. I would expect to see them pick it up a little bit. Very surprised they haven't been able to get their running game going more. With backs like Ray Rice and Bernard Pierce, the Ravens should be a top 10 rushing offense, and they're not a top 20 rushing offense. Now, the Steelers, they have a good defense everywhere, but they're better in the secondary than they are against the run, so you would look for Baltimore to try to pound the ball a little bit in this game. i got to say I have a lean towards Pittsburgh here. I think the Steelers are a team to watch right now. I told a friend of mine before the Steelers win last week over the New York Jets that I thought right then, 
was a good time for a Steelers futures bet to win the AFC North. I believe it was 28 to 1 at that time. The Steelers obviously were winless, but they're only two games back in the loss column of the Cincinnati Bengals and only one game back of Baltimore and Cleveland. Don't count Pittsburgh out in the race for the AFC North yet, I am telling you. And if they win this game on Sunday, you watch. There's going to be plenty more people getting on that bandwagon. And I have a feeling the Steelers will win this game. I'm not impressed with Baltimore this season. They've really struggled on the road. The Ravens rank in the bottom half of the NFL in both total offense and total defense. Pittsburgh finally picking up some momentum last week. Their offense has been slowly improving. Even though they only scored 19 in their last game against the New York Jets, the Jets a really tough defense, and Pittsburgh combined for 50 points in their two previous games. Now That might not sound great, an average of 25 points per game, but considering they scored 9 and 10 in their first two games, we are seeing progress, slow but steady progress, from the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. Of course, I don't expect them to light up the scoreboard on Sunday. I do lean towards the under there. But again, I, I do think Pittsburgh might be able to pick up a win over the Baltimore Ravens. Now, two games I'd like to talk about quickly that to me fall under the same category, and that is suspicious lines. I saw these two lines, and right off, you know which side the public is going to like. Coincidentally, these, these are both four-point numbers, both games in which the road team is favored by four points. I'm talking about the New England Patriots going on the road to face the New York Jets. Patriots, a four-point favorite on bet deck, 43.5 the total. And the San Francisco 49ers going on the road to face the Tennessee Titans. Again, San Francisco minus four there, 39.5 the total in that game. Anytime you see a total below 40, that is a low total. But we don't expect to see much scoring in that game. Again, in both of these games, boy, it feels like you're being baited to bet on the favorite. The New England Patriots, I know they only beat the Jets by three early in the season, and I'm sure Jets betters, any people who will bet on the Jets this week, that's what they'll be leaning on. That The Jets' defense is going to shut down this New England offense just like they did a few weeks ago, holding them to 13 points. But man, the Jets are just so bad on offense themselves. The Patriots were second in the NFL in scoring defense heading into this last week when they, they allowed 27 in the New Orleans Saints, but I thought they played pretty well on defense throughout most of that game. So the Patriots with a feisty defense this year. The Jets, like we said, they've been a, a disaster on offense. If it hadn't been for that one Monday night game, and Geno Smith played well in that game, 16 of 20, three touchdowns, no turnovers, but really that has been the outlier. You look at the, the rest of the games, Geno Smith in the Jets' other five games, 13 turnovers. I mean, he's on pace to dwarf Mark Sanchez's turnover numbers. Of course, it's to be expected. This guy is a rookie with not a great supporting cast in terms of the skill position talent. He, he does take some chances down the field, some ill-advised decisions. I'm sure Bill Belichick has noticed that. I bet you he has a better game plan for the New York Jets offense than he had even a few weeks ago. And they did pretty well against the Jets offense a few weeks ago, limiting them to 10 points. To be honest with you, I'm going to have trouble making a case for the New York Jets in this game. And as you know, if you visit us here regularly on BetDeck NFL, we make the case for both teams on our game previews. Uh, but it's going to be very, very tough for me to back New England knowing they're going to be a great a, a big public team this week, knowing how suspicious this line feels. I mean, you know, every week in the NFL we see a couple of lines like this. I can think of two off the top of my head last week. The Cincinnati Bengals, only a seven-point favorite on the road in Buffalo, even though the Bills were starting. Thad Lewis, who had been a practice squad quarterback the week before, had only had one NFL start under his belt. Now, I thought that was a funny line, and predictably the, Bengal, the public jumped all over the Bengals. Predictably the Bengals failed to cover. Another game I felt like fit right in that category. The Indianapolis Colts, only a one-point favorite over the San Diego Chargers. Even though the Colts had been playing really well, they had won three straight games, including wins over San Francisco and Seattle. The Chargers had just looked terrible in a loss to the Oakland Raiders. They had one of the worst defenses in the NFL, 28th in total defense. It was tough to make a case for the Chargers, but looking at the betting, the betting patterns and the line, you just knew that from a better's perspective, the Chargers were the proper play, and that's what we said on the preview. Sure enough, the Chargers ended up winning that game. And again, in both of these games, New England and the Jets and San Francisco and Tennessee, if you're just betting these games blind without any of your subjectivity entered in there, without any of your opinions on, oh, well, Geno Smith is terrible and Tom Brady is great or San Francisco is much better than, than Tennessee, any of the subjective opinions you have, you leave those aside and you just analyze these games 
from a better's perspective, meaning seeing where the money is going, seeing what the line is doing, you watch. The money is going to be heavily leaning towards the favorites in these games, but the line is not going to do much moving at all. <laughs> I, I doubt we're going to see this line move up to six or six and a half, definitely not seven in either one of these games. These are going to be the type of games that fit the profile of games where the quote-unquote sharp money will be on the other side, in this case the Jets and the Titans. But man, it's going to be tough. Going to be tough to trust either the Jets or the Titans in these spots. You know, we talked about the Jets and their rookie quarterback, Geno Smith. Listen, I've bet on the Jets once this year in their win against the Buffalo Bills. I've bet against them a couple of times in their losses to Tennessee and last week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I, I feel like I have a pretty good beat on this team, as you always feel about teams that you end up guessing right on repeatedly. And, man, I just don't like their chances, even though they're at home. Not sure I like their chances with the rookie going up against this New England defense. Seems like the New England offense is finally starting to get something going, scoring 30 points last week against a New Orleans Saints defense. This has been very tough this season. But it really feels like a trap game. Same with the San Francisco-Tennessee game. I mean, the Titans have been horrible on offense since Ryan Fitzpatrick took over at quarterback for Jake Locker, and I am the first to say I was wrong about that. I admit when I'm wrong about things, and when Locker went down, because for the last couple of seasons I've thought that Locker was not the best quarterback on the Tennessee Titans roster, and I stand by that. When Matt Hasselbeck played over the last two years for Tennessee, he played much better than Locker played. The team performed much better than they did when Locker was under center. Of course, Hasselbeck has moved on now. They signed Ryan Fitzpatrick in the offseason to back up Locker. Fitzpatrick had been the starter for the last several seasons in Buffalo. And Fitzpatrick has had more NFL success than Locker has. I know Locker is a younger player, still developing. And so I thought that when Locker went down a couple of weeks ago, it was going to be a blessing in disguise for the Tennessee offense. Thought Fitzpatrick was going to come in there and provide him with some veteran leadership. And maybe a little bit more in terms of accuracy downfield than what Locker gives him. I was way, way wrong on that. Ryan Fitzpatrick has been really bad in the two games he's played. Even though the Titans hung with the Seattle Seahawks last week, ended up covering on the road in Seattle, which is a, a rarity, the offense produced less than 220 total yards. And facing the San Francisco 49ers this week, boy, hard to envision them having much success. The under is a bet I would look at here. But the tough thing with under bets in cases like this and in cases like Seattle, Arizona, is sometimes when you're, you're betting on the under because you know how dominant the defenses are going to be and how bad the offensive are, the offenses are, sometimes you're so right that you turn out to be wrong. What I mean by that is if the defenses dominate to the point where they're scoring defensively or they're creating turnovers and, and giving the offense the ball deep in, a, deep in the opponent's territory, things like that, frequently we see over happen, especially when you have a low total like this, 39.5. Take the Seahawks-Arizona Cardinals game, for instance, a Thursday night game, which I said I like the under 40 in that game. Well, those defenses have players like Patrick Peterson, in the case of the Arizona Cardinals, Richard Sherman, in the case of the Seattle Seahawks, guys who have shown the capability of taking interceptions and taking them all the way back for touchdowns. So you don't want to be so right on the under in these games. They end up backfiring. The defense just... It dominates to the point where they score points themselves or set up the offense for easy points. It's why I always hesitate uh, betting unders when we see totals like this, 39.5. Really, anything below 40, it gets very unpredictable. But I tell you what, I do lean towards an under bet in this San Francisco-Tennessee game. It would be hard for me to bet over 39.5 knowing the type of success the 49ers defense is sure to have against Tennessee. Now, the only thing that would scare me off of a 49ers bet here is the success the Tennessee defense is likely to have against the San Francisco offense. Not many people realize it, but the Titans are really good on defense this season. Top 10 in the league in both total defense and scoring defense. Been a total 180 from last season when they allowed more points than any team in the NFL. Greg Williams deserves a lot of credit, no doubt about it. And the Niners have struggled on offense, especially in the passing game. They have not been able to get anything going through the air since week one when Colin Kaepernick threw for over 400 yards against the Green Bay Packers. The Niners have been very one-dimensional over the last few weeks. And if, that, if they're that way against the Tennessee Titans, they're going to struggle to score points because Tennessee is good enough on defense where if you're not balanced, they're going to be able to stop what you like to do. And in the case of the San Francisco 49ers, what they like to do is run the football. So I look for a low-scoring game there. Hard for me to make a case for Tennessee, 
just like it's hard for me to make a case for the New York Jets against the New England Patriots, but both of those games feel like trap games, games I will most likely be staying away from unless I decide to play on the total. Now, there's plenty of other games that look interesting this week, but we've already been talking for, what, 20 minutes? You probably don't want to sit through any more of this video, so we're going to wrap it up right now. But again, we'll preview all these games in detail, so we hope you check back BetDeck NFL over the course of the week. Hey, until then, you can reach me on Twitter if you'd like, at BetDeck NFL. We do follow back. If you've got any questions or comments for me about the site, john at betdeckNFL.com is my email address. That is J-O-H-N at betdeckNFL.com. So we hope you enjoy what you're doing here, what we're doing here, excuse me. We always welcome your feedback. Until then, for BetDeck NFL, I'm John Arnett.